know that India is currently facing one of its worst water crisis in a decade. Of 91 reservoirs nationwide, they have only 29% of water left in them. Thousands of villages all over Maharashtra are also facing one of its worst crises in a decade. They're depending solely on water coming in from tankers, donations and charities. South India, in fact, is worst off. Reservoir levels over there are almost at 20%. But you know what? This is happening the world over. Brazil faced one of its worst water crises in 2015 with China, Syria, Pakistan, Turkey, California, Africa not far behind. Basically, there's water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. This is how much fresh water actually exists. Of all the Earth's water, 97.5% is salt water and 2.5% is fresh. Of that 2.5%, 70% is locked in glaciers, 30% is in the ground and that leaves only under 1%, like 0.007% that is readily accessible for human use. 0.007%, how do you even divide that amongst a world population of 7 billion people? 1.1 billion people lack the access to safe drinking water. That's almost 1 in 6 people. This is what our water condition looks like today worldwide. And this is what our water condition will look like in 2025. How did we even get here? How did something that is supposed to be a basic human right become so scarce? There's a number of factors that have contributed to this. There's environmental factors like floods, global warming, drought. Then of course there's the man-made factors where the demand is way more than the supply. Countries like India and China which are obviously at the forefront of this current water condition that we are suffering from. Then bad farming practices, overdrafting of groundwater levels and of course bad agricultural yields. Water today promises to be to the 21st century what oil was to the 20th century, a commodity that will determine the wealth of a nation. When there is a crisis, two types of people emerge. You have your problem solvers and you have the people that take advantage of that current situation. And that's where privatization comes in. But how can that be, right? How can you almost privatize something that is supposed to be a basic human right to all? A man can survive months without food, but he cannot go even beyond five to seven days without water. In fact, in 2010, the United Nations passed this huge glorified resolution where they said, the United Nations recognizes the right to safe and clean drinking water and sanitation as a human right. Something that is essential for the full enjoyment of life and all human rights. But unfortunately, today we're in this situation where as the demand grows, the infrastructure for water crumbles and ultimately the world is running out of water. Now many people out there believe that the cash-strapped governments can be helped by these angel investors, people that will come in and put their own private money. But not everyone believes that such kind of partnerships will actually improve the access of water to those that need it the most, the poor. Market distortions will kick in and they will ultimately deprive the needy of one of life's most critical resources. In fact, we already have the Indian version of something like this. It's called the water mafia. What we take for granted, something that is free flowing from our taps, people in the slums actually pay for one hour of water every day, 2000 rupees a month. Water tanker mafias today are selling 9,500 liters of water for almost 3,500 to anywhere up to 9,000 rupees per trip. Where do you think their water is coming from? Our municipal cooperation pipes. In fact, California also has another sophisticated version of this. It's called a water bank, where big companies are buying water. But wait a minute, I just told you that California doesn't have any water. So what they're doing is they're buying something that is called as paper water. When California actually has that water in the future, it guarantees that these businesses will be the first ones to get that water. So what did they basically go and do? They went and they bought shares in water. 
they privatized our electricity and look at where it got us with reliance ruling the roost even if you change to tata power you have to pay reliance something that is known as a wheeling charge a charge that is almost 25% of your total bill can you imagine the kind of death bell that we would ask for if they privatized our water our government claims that almost 45% of water gets lost because of leakages leakages that are taking place because of old drainage systems systems that they don't have the money to fix or the will to do so so why not bring in some rich people who have that money to invest in our infrastructure let them take care of it if they take care of it rich people will have water water that poor people ultimately won't another thought that is out there is that if you put a value on something that is so precious then maybe people will value it even more human beings need at least 5 liters of water a day for your hydration then you need at least 25 liters a day minimum for your hygiene and your basic needs that's a hell of a lot of water and a lot of people that we have here in india put a value on it charge them maybe then they'll value it even more in thirsty regions of the world nestle and coca cola have constantly been clashing with communities they're getting perceived as those big giant companies that are sucking small villages and farmers dry now they did it in the village of bhatti in pakistan they did it in kerala they did it in a number of villages all over india and the world while both companies may have these very aggressive water saving campaigns that they have deployed because after all they know that water is a very essential input to their business but at the same time remember how i told you when there is a crisis there's the problem solvers and the people that take advantage of it check this out in the city of sacramento which was in the fourth year of its worst drought nestle was taking sacramento's water and selling it back to its citizens at a profit on march 16 2016 the city of sacramento has turned around and sued nestle Big companies around the world today are buying groundwater reservoirs and in fact if you're sitting on a fresh water body then guess what you're sitting on a future gold mine big companies they don't care about the environment they don't care about human rights all that they care about is profit in fact even the ceo of nestle turned around and said this water is not a human right it needs to be privatized think about it Aquafina belongs to Pepsi, Kinley belongs to Coca-Cola, and today you will spend anywhere between 12 to 20 rupees for a liter of water. Why is it that Americans are coming onto our soil, taking our water, filtering it and selling it back to you? If you read the label carefully, it doesn't even say mineral water. It says packaged drinking water. What happened to that good old water bottle that your mother used to pack and give to you when you left for school? Why can't we take water from home every time that we step out? As a country, can you even imagine the amount of plastic that we are generating? So now that you have all this information, what you can do is that you can help by sharing this video. Try and bring about an awareness of what is actually going on. Yes, water will be the next gold. I'm releasing this video very close to like the end of May and the monsoons are around the corner. We just might have one of the heaviest rainfalls that we've ever seen in the last 5 years. There might be floods, but that will not help increase the groundwater levels. One good monsoon will not solve this problem. The problem still persists. And if this problem persists, then slowly the world will get divided into two halves. The water halves and the have nots there will be the winners canada alaska america and there will be the losers india china syria turkey these will be people that will be different from the oil conflict of the 20th century but what you will have is that a divide will take place a divide where you will have those people that can afford to have these resources of water and all these people that will be left fighting over these limited resources of water ultimately we all will go to war if you've seen the oscar winning movie the big shot the lead character michael burry he was the one that actually predicted the wall street meltdown that would take place 5 years before it actually took place today that man has left gambling in all stock markets and he is invested heavily in water